Hello again, and welcome to online worship with the congregation and friends of St Stephen's Parish Church here in Aberdeen in Scotland, and a very warm welcome to you wherever you are. We know we are regularly joined by people in Aberdeen as well as in other places in the UK and indeed all around the world. While many of us may be missing the opportunities we once had to gather together in church buildings, it's good to know that we're very much part of the worldwide church, sharing the gospel as Jesus commanded. So wherever you are, whoever you are, all are welcome in this place. So just now we need to make ourselves comfortable and prepare ourselves to join in worship together. In Psalm 138, we read these words. I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and will praise your name for your unfailing love and your faithfulness. For you have so exalted your solemn decree that it surpasses your fame. When I called, you answered me. You greatly emboldened me. May all the kings of the earth praise you, Lord, when they hear what you have decreed. May they sing of the ways of the Lord, for the, gro the glory of the Lord is great. Though the Lord is exalted, he looks kindly on the lowly. Though loftily, he sees them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you preserve my life. You stretch out your hands against the anger of my foes. With your right hand you save me. The Lord will vindicate me. Your love, Lord, endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. Amen. Let's join our voices in our first hymn. Hymn number, one, hymn number 202 from CH4. Stand up and bless the Lord. Let us pray. Almighty and all-powerful God, creator of the universe and all that it contains, majestic and awesome, source of all light and all life, we gather here to worship you, for you alone are worthy of worship. You are magnificent beyond our wildest imaginings. You call us into your presence and we bow down. We bow before your splendour. We kneel before your majesty. We enter into your court with worship and thanksgiving in our hearts. 
we enter into your presence and there behind the majesty we find our loving God, our parent God, waiting to welcome his children home. We come knowing that you are far above us and yet we find you waiting at our feet. Glorious God, you entered into our world and into our humanity. In Jesus Christ, you took on flesh. You became our servant king. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us, the perfect example of humility and obedience. You became one of us to show each of us how we should live. You came to us to teach us the ways of your Father, to show us his face and his love for us. You showed us the kind of love to which we should aspire, the love that sets aside self in favour of other. Come to us again in this time and space. Open our eyes and ears to the words of your gospel. By your example, teach us of selfless love. Remind us of how we must give of ourselves to bring joy to one another, to share love with our brothers and sisters, to reach out to those who have not yet heard your name, and to bring glory to your name and to the Father's. All loving, all caring God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, you provide us with so many opportunities to live for you. Open our hearts to the ways of your kingdom. Show us again the fruits of your Holy Spirit. May we live our lives in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and with self-control. Then we may truly call ourselves your children, made by you in your own image, to bring glory to your name and your kingdom to earth. God of all, awesome majesty, loving parent, hear the voices of your children as we speak to you now in the words Jesus taught to his followers. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's join our voices in the words of hymn 132, Immortal, Invisible, God Only Wise.
Testament reading is taken from Isaiah 51 verses 1 to 6. Everlasting salvation for Zion. Listen to me, you who pursue righteousness and who seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you were hewn. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who gave you birth. When I called him, he was only one man, and I blessed him and made him many. The Lord will surely comfort Zion and will look with compassion on all her ruins. He will make her deserts like Eden, her wastelands like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the sound of singing. Listen to me, my people. Hear me, my nation. Instruction will go out from me. My justice will become like a light to the nations. My righteousness draws near speedily. My salvation is on the way and my arm will bring justice to the nations. The islands will look to me and wait in hope for my arm. Lift up your eyes to the heavens. Look at the earth beneath. The heavens will vanish like smoke. The earth will wear out like a garment and its inhabitants die like flies. But my salvation will last forever. My righteousness will never fail. The New Testament reading is to be found in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 to 8. Romans 12, verses 1 to 8, Living Sacrifices. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Amen.
Today's Gospel reading is from Matthew, chapter 16, verses 13 through 20. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but my, by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. The word of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. In the passage which we heard from Matthew's Gospel 3, Jesus took his disciples back into Gentile ter territory again, just as he did last week when they met the Canaanite woman. Caesarea Philippi, to the northeast of Galilee, was a place where many religions met. There were many temples to the Syrian god Baal, and in the area, the mountain home of Pan, the Greek god of nature, was also to be found. It was also the location of the white marble temple to Caesar, erected by Herod, 
as well as the source of the River Jordan, with all its significance in Judaism. It was there Jesus chose to ask the disciples who other people thought he was, and to ask that follow-up question, who do you say I am? The responses of the disciples to Jesus' first question were in keeping with the beliefs of the Jewish people. People expected the return of Jeremiah and Elijah before the Messiah would come. And so to think of Jesus as either of these would have been seen as recognition of his greatness as a prophet. Well, whatever, whatever other people thought, Peter saw much more than this. Peter, the common working man, the guy who blundered his way through so many situations, had a moment of incredible clarity, another moment of pure faith. That same faith that enabled Peter to climb out of the boat and take a few steps towards Jesus on the water of Lake Galilee has opened Peter's eyes again to the truth of who Jesus really is. Who do you say I am? Only Peter was able to express his faith in words. We don't know what the others were thinking. The Gospels do not record how the other disciples reacted. But the expressed faith of this one man was enough for Jesus. Finally, someone was getting his message. The meaning of Jesus' response makes this perhaps one of the most contested verses in Scripture. Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven, Jesus said. And he went on, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Well, it's on these verses that the Roman Catholic Church bases the authority of the Pope. Whatever way we interpret what Jesus meant, we can rest assured that Jesus was bestowing enormous praise on Peter that day. The word rock, when applied in the Old Testament, was often used as a great compliment. We heard it this morning earlier in our reading from Isaiah. Look to the rock from which you were cut and to the quarry from which you've been hewn. Look to Abraham, your father. We hear the word rock every week in our prayer before we hear the sermon. May the words of my lips and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, were the words of the psalmist in Psalm 19, verse 14, where he addresses God as his rock. The name Peter means rock, and it was no accident that this was the name Jesus used from the very start when he called Simon Peter to follow him. At this point in Jesus' ministry, as Jesus looked to spend time alone with his closest disciples, he knew where his path was leading. He was aware of the expectations the people had of an avenging Messiah, a warrior Messiah. Expectations that were not in keeping with who Jesus is. And he knew the religious objections the Pharisees held against him. And he knew the civic authorities saw him as a, re a rebel and a troublemaker. What comfort would Jesus have found in Peter's declaration, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. This moment of clarity from Peter, this recognition of Jesus as the divine Messiah, fleeting as it may have been that day, was evidence to Jesus that his message was getting through. And so Peter became one of the building blocks which Jesus will use to build his church, with Jesus himself as the cornerstone.
And we say it all the time. The church is not a building. The church is the people. Today, Jesus continues to ask people, Who do you say I am? He doesn't ask what we know about him. He doesn't ask about the faith traditions of our parents or our grandparents. But he asks each of us, who do you say I am? As he continues to build his church on earth. Over the centuries, many people have responded as Peter did. Many have had their eyes open to the true identity of Jesus Christ as Messiah and Lord. People from all walks of life have responded to Jesus' call to follow him, just as Peter did. And they have found the same faith that Peter voiced that day in Caesarea Philippi. Whether we are simple folk like Peter or great intellectuals, we are called to answer the question, Who do you say I am? It's not a question of our understanding of church doctrine, but a question of what we know in our hearts to be true. In his letter to the Romans, Paul wrote about the church as the body of Christ, each one of us with a part to play, each one necessary to the healthy functioning of the whole body, no one part more important than another. And Paul encourages us to see that it's our differences that unite us into a strong body when we use the gifts which God has given to each of us. We don't always recognise our own gifts. In fact, many would deny having any gifts at all. I wonder, did Peter ever see himself in the role of leader before Jesus called him? to be the rock on which he built the church? Did he think of himself as a man of great faith, the man which he would become as he continued in Christ's service? The setting of today's gospel story in Caesarea Philippi must also give us food for thought. Jesus had led the disciples away from their usual environment and into a place where many beliefs converged. They were surrounded by a number of different influences when Jesus asked them who Peter thought, who people thought he was. The disciples were quite possibly out of their comfort zone, but they were nonetheless able to make a response to what they were being asked. But when Jesus asked the disciples about their own thoughts and beliefs, they were a bit less forthcoming with their answers until Peter spoke. I wonder, did Jesus deliberately wait until they were on unfamiliar ground? Was it Jesus' intention to surround them with possibilities before asking them what they believed about him? In these days of closed buildings, as we, the Christian Church, are perhaps on unfamiliar ground. We're out of our communities and called to witness there. Surrounded by many influences and without the sanctuary of familiar spaces, faces and routine, Jesus continues to ask each one of us, Who do you say I am? If, like Peter, we are able to answer, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God, then Jesus is calling us too to share the good news of the gospel. We are a part of the body of Christ, the church that's not built of granite but of living stones. Like Peter and like Paul, we have a message to share and it's a message that people must have the opportunity to hear, perhaps more now than at any other point in our lifetimes. In this time of uncertainty and fear, 
People more than ever need something in which they can place their faith, their hope and their trust. We have been blessed with the faith we share with Peter. We have been blessed with the faith that enabled Peter to go on, even on his worst days when he denied ever knowing Jesus. We have been blessed with a faith that allows us to return and seek forgiveness and a faith which enables us to face circumstances far beyond our control. We have been blessed with the faith Peter put into words. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And that has to be a faith worth sharing. Ask yourself the question, who do you say I am? And what will you do with the answer? Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have called each of us to faith in you with the question, who do you say I am? And by your grace, you will enable us to respond as Peter did. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Draw close to us now, as we seek to know you better. Wherever we are, you are alongside us. You are our God, our King, our Saviour. Gracious Lord, we ask your blessing today on all who struggle to have faith in you. We pray especially for those who have been hurt by their experience of church those who have been rejected as somehow not good enough. Lord, we ask your forgiveness and theirs. Teach us to see that you welcome all who come to you. Teach us to welcome all others on your behalf. We ask your comfort for all people who find life difficult. For those who face enormous challenges every day and are weary. For people everywhere who struggle to make ends meet. 
for those who have lost jobs because of the current pandemic, and also for those who've been unemployed long term. For those who must scrimp and save to feed their children. For those who live with war, tyranny or famine. For all who face poverty. Remind us, Lord, that whatever we do for others, we do for you. Help us to be generous. And may our generosity be in your name. May our actions towards others speak clearly of the love we find in you. A love that they too may experience firsthand. Lord, for the many people who are lonely or isolated, we ask the comfort of companionship and friendship. Because people who reach out to others, whoever they may be, drawing them into our fellowship, remind us that we follow a master who sought out the marginalised. You healed the sick, sat with outcasts, ate with sinners. You shared a cup with a Samaritan woman. You called a tax collector to follow you. You faced death between two criminals. And you turned no one away who came to you. Teach us, Lord, to be like you to actively seek out opportunities to share your love, to take every chance to tell others of the hope we have in you. Blessed Saviour, we pray for those who have lost faith in you, for people who feel their prayers have gone unanswered, for people so laid low by bereavement that they can no longer see hope ahead. For people let down by family and friends when they most needed support. For children, women and men caught up in abusive relationships. For all whose hurt and disappointment with life has closed their hearts and minds to your love and hope for the future. Open our eyes and our hearts to those places where we can be your church, those situations where we can be your body here on earth. Place us alongside others, where we can help rekindle a flame of faith and hope and love, that people, even the unlikeliest of people, will come to know you as their God. Loving Lord Jesus, use each of us in the week ahead to do your will, to share your love, to offer your peace, to be your church that is your kingdom here on earth. For it is in your name we pray. Amen. As we continue in a local lockdown here in Aberdeen for the time being and at any time in the future, please feel welcome to contact us through our website or our Facebook. We would love to hear from you, hear your news and if you're willing to let us to share it with others. If you have the means and you would like to make a contribution to the work of St Stephen's Church, offerings can be made to us online at Church of Scotland website. There's a link there to this congregation. Or if you'd like to set up a standing order through your bank account, please contact myself or our church treasurer, Alan, via the contacts on our St Stephen's Church website. Well, we conclude our worship this morning with an old hymn, hymn number 514, Onward, Christian Soldiers. <laughs>
has been a great privilege, as always, to lead you in worship here. Let's now go in the peace of Christ, out into our communities, to love our God and to serve his people, to serve our God and to love his people. And as we go, may the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain with you always. Amen.